age. He, in theory, killed himself by shooting himself with a shotgun. But many say he was murdered. Before I read on, let me tell you what I know. But what I've read anyway. I read a book all about it. He apparently, well, his wife at the time, Courtney Love, apparently asked somebody who worked in a petrol station, I think it was, to kill Kurt. And he said no, this boy did, obviously. And then a few weeks later he was found dead in his shed at home. He went missing. Everyone was looking for him. And he found his way back to the family home. Where in the shed. The shed, listen to this, was locked from the outside. From what I've heard, what I read. How the hell could he lock it from the outside? And even there was that many drugs in his body. That he would not have been able to pull the trigger of a shotgun. So... Make of that what you will. The claim is that he had too much heroin in his system to have been able to function in a way that would have allowed him to control the gun. There we go. Furthermore, it also appeared that the gun had been wiped clean. I didn't know that bit. Rumours of how Cobain died have quieted down in recent years, but they still exist and with good reason. In so many ways, it makes no sense that someone with his fame would kill himself. And if he did, certainly not in a way that raises so many questions. Or the only other thing I'd say about Kurt Cobain is a lot of people who don't who really haven't read the book or know about him or have known how much pain he was in. Kurt Cobain was in stupid amounts of pain with his back. I'm not sure where it was from, but he was in horrible amounts of pain every day. So maybe that was why he did it. If he did it, he hurt himself like this. Number 14, Anna Nicole Smith. Anna Nicole certainly had a very interesting career. Firstly, she was considered an incredibly hot woman. Then she turned into a drug adult, overweight reality star. The whole thing seemed pretty much as sad as it could possibly get, but it wasn't. She was found dead in a hotel room from what was described as a lethal drug combination. Now, on the one hand, this all seems rather normal. One could tell just by watching her on TV that she was into a whole bunch of drugs. But on the other, she was surrounded by so many people who could have and should have made sure she'd got the help she needed. And to top it all off, she was the widow of a very wealthy man that was around 60 years older than she was. So there was a lot of money involved too. The whole thing just always seemed kind of fishy. Now, I don't know enough about Anna Nicole Smith to say it was a uh, murder or suicide or whatever. You find a lot of people slept a lot, just get mixed up in drugs and don't know when to say no. Just say no. No to the drugs. Yes to the smarties, thank you. Number 13, George Reeves. George Reeves was best known for, as for playing Superman on television which is something that he never could get away from in his personal or professional life. In fact, some said he was depressed about it. He was found dead by gunshot wound, and the coroner said it was suicide. This has become the subject of much debate, as many theorised he was murdered. In fact, it is rumoured that his ex-girlfriend once confessed to a priest that she was responsible for his murder. Now, priests do not lie, unless... No, they do not lie. Is this a case of a rumour that just never dies, or is it really the fact that George Reeves was killed and someone completely got away with it? Well, sadly, it seems we will never know for certain, because of an investigation that was lacking in detail. That's always a bit of a bugger, when we don't look into it properly at the time, and things sort of get a bit hazy. Number 12 best martial artist I've ever seen in my life. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee is a legend and he's still thought of as perhaps the best action star of all time. Would this still be the case if he had not died at a young age through tragic circumstances? We'll never know. He apparently died because of an allergic reaction to a painkiller, but rumours persist that he was murdered. This is a good summation about why better investigations are needed in all of these cases. One of the most famous men in the world and one of the world's best martial artists dies because
because he had a reaction to a painkiller. Now this might be true, but if so, then the coroner and officials needed to do a better job at putting the word out there, otherwise rumours would continue going around and no one would be sure about what really happened. Hell, if Bruce Lee was murdered, that is pretty messed up. I loved Enter the Dragon. <laughs> a bit of a giveaway isn't it and there was no traces of the drug in her stomach what yeah, it was an overdose but there was no traces of the drug and she's battered oh yeah no, it's definitely an overdose she overdosed on fresh air <gasps> yeah it don't work does it really um, which would mean that she had not swallowed the drug the examiner wanted to examine her body to find out how the drugs got into her system but through sloppy handling were destroyed. How the hell did he destroy all? Oh my, it gets from bad to worse. It really does. Another one thing that makes one suspicious is that it was discovered that she had enough drugs in her system to kill ten people. Oh. And she was not a big woman, was she? She was tiny. What the hell? One thing is that's for sure, that is for sure is that if a better investigation had been done, we would not have had to ask so many questions. That's ridiculous. Ten people. stars of Clueless had just completed a breakout role in 8 Mile and to top it all off even dated As Ashton Kutcher which back then seemed a lot cooler than it does now. In 2009 the LA Fire Department arrived at her home to find her unconscious. She died at the hospital after going into cardiac arrest. The coroner said that it was from a it was from pneumonia but many have said that they think drugs to blame to make it even more odd her husband died of pneumonia five months later the whole thing just does not add up so I even speculate that she was poisoned it's a bit odd that they both died of pneumonia within five months of each other number eight and a great musician Jeff Buckley Jeff Buckley had it all going he was only 21 he was 31 sorry but he already had a huge following lost because of his album Grace what was song that is which included the hit single Hallelujah oh that's the Hallelujah what a song a cover of a song by Leonard Cohen in 97 he went swimming in a harbour in Memphis and then vanished he was familiar with the river and for some reason supposedly went into it with all of his clothes on a few days later his body was found although there was a statement released that there was nothing mysterious about his death and that it was accidental Come on, who goes into harbour fully clothed to take a swim? I can answer that question pretty much no one ever, which is why this case deserved an investigation. 
imagine that never happened. Oh yeah, I'm really famous. I've got lots of expensive clothes on. Let's go jump in the canal and have a swim with all the bikes and prams and trolleys. That makes sense. In my clothes. Now I'll keep my clothes on. Why not take my clothes off? Idiots. Number seven. And this bloke was the lead singer of my favourite band growing up. In excess was the band. I thought they were fantastic. An Australian band. Uh, with the lead singer Michael Hutchins. And uh, the, when this happened, they were one of the most popular bands in the world. They were fantastic. Mystify. Mystify me. Yeah. Love that song. He was very talented as well as being quite charming and was without a doubt a rock star. He had the great hair, the great look. Of course he was. When he was found dead in a hotel room with a noose around his neck, he had supposedly been depressed. And it was clear that he was on alcohol and drugs at the time of his death. This led the coroner to say that he had committed suicide. Later though, one of his exes came out and said that she believed he had died of auto-erotic asphyxiation. Yeah, that kinky thing where they choke each other. As apparently that was something he was into. Because of a lack of a solid investigation, the world will never know what actually happened in this case. It was, apparently, apparently you know, that thing where you could turn up by being choked to death. I don't get it myself. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. No, that does not turn me on in the slightest. Not at all. Number six, Johnny Stompanato. Stompanato was a mob bodyguard who also happened to be the boyfriend of Lana Tuna. Lana Turner, sorry. One of the biggest stars of the time. He was found stabbed to death in front of her Beverly Hills home. Turner's teenage daughter said that she had stabbed him to protect her mother from him as he was attacking her, which obviously does not really pass the straight face test as this guy was a mob enforcer. It does not pass the straight face test that he could be killed by a teenager with a knife. The thought was that this was just made up to protect Lana Turner from being charged. If it was, then it worked as the death was ruled as a justifiable homicide. I don't know who the hell Lana Turner was. No idea. Number five, Andy Kaufman. Kaufman was a legend in comedy, not so much because he was so funny, but because his whole thing involved messing with people all the time. He was a troll before people even knew what a troll was. So when he died at the age of 35 from an undisclosed illness, a lot of people were pretty sceptical. Yet even before his death, talked about faking his demise. Even now, all these years later, there are still rumours out there that he's still alive. At this point, it does not, it does seem pretty clear that he truly has died. But if anyone could pull off a fake death, it was him. But back to the Black the Peace, what kind of famous celebrity dies at 35 and people are not even told what happened? Today, however, it is widely believed that he'd been inflicted with a rare form of lung cancer. Rather odd one, that. Number four, Kirsty McCall. Uh, Kirsty, who was a famous musician, was swimming off the coast of Mexico with her family when a speedboat came barreling towards her children. Flipping egg. She dived in front of the boat in an effort to save them and was nearly cut in half by the propeller of the boat. Holy crap! Talk about nasty. The boat was owned by a wealthy Mexican businessman, and people afterwards said he was the one driving the boat. But one of his employees was also on the boat and said he was driving, leading to his conviction and a fine. It was thus widely believed that the employee took the blame for the accident because of money that was offered to him. It does, it does not seem that hard to find out what really happened in this case considering there are a lot of witnesses to the accident. Imagine that. You save your kids, but you get cut in half. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> that sounds painful. Number three, Grace Kelly. Grace Kelly was a gorgeous movie star back when being a movie star really meant something. She even ended up marrying the Prince of Monaco. One day, she was driving on a mountain road in France when she apparently suffered a stroke and died. Her daughter was in the car for her. Her daughter survived, but suffered from some serious injuries. While this may just have been the case, and nothing seems to really happen as far as Grace Kelly's death, the whole thing just seems odd to many people. Sometimes investigations need to be done, not so much because of the crime being committed, but just 
some people have a better understanding of what happened when Rue was going to be put to rest. Number two, Bobby Fuller. Bobby Fuller was a singer who is best known for writing and performing the song I Fought the Law, which was later covered by the punk band The Clash. I Fought the Law and the Law Ward. What a great song. He was found dead in his car outside of his Hollywood home. And it was thought that he had died because of gasoline vapours. On the death report, the coroner, coroner checked accident and suicide, but then question, put question marks next to them, which made some think that maybe Fuller was murdered. I mean, seriously, what kind of coroner report was that? It just goes to show you how different things are today, as there is no way something like this could have happened now without a full investigation going on. But back then, things just slipped through the cracks, it seems. And number one, in our list is Thelma Todd. Never heard of her, gotta be honest. It's not Thelma Louise, is it? Thelma Louise, rather. Or Thelma out of uh, Scooby Doo. Another very odd case was the death of Thelma Todd. She was a very successful actress who had been in over 120 movies. She was found dead in the carriage of her boyfriend's former wife's house. Odd place to be. The cause of death was supposedly carbon monoxide poisoning blood was found on her head, leading some to think that she was not unconscious before the carbon monoxide poisoning happened. Make the case even more odd, the boyfriend was murdered two years later. Sometimes deaths don't add up just because of odd circumstances, but other times it seems certain foul play occurred. You know how you can tell the difference. Conduct a good investigation, which did not happen in this situation. So, the woman dies in her boyfriend's ex-wife's garage. Why'd you be there? Why'd I be in my wife's ex's garage? And then I die from a knock on the head and carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh, I did it to myself. I did it to myself, officer. <laughs> Fun be fun. <laughs> and then my, my wife dies two years later to cover it up. Odd. Or not. I don't know. True crime and conspiracy theories all over this channel, guys. We have a way more coming up. I'm going to look into secret societies. We're going to take a look at Ellis Island, which was a big immigration place where all the illegal immigrants went to in America back in the day. We're going to look at Guantanamo Bay. We're going to look at everything and anything. Whoa. We're all over it, guys, here on Ollie's ASMR World. Thumbs up.